Hello and welcome to my channel. In this one I'm going to show you how to draw these waves in pastel. First I'm going to draw the line of the horizon. It's going to be way up here because most of the scene will be the sea and the waves. I need this line to be straight and level so I'm going to use this and draw it again. It's a little bit better now. So once I have that, I'm going to work on the sky. I want the sky to be mostly dull, bluish gray. I'm going to use a little bit of gray pastel and a little bit of blue. The surface I'm working on is a 1000 grit waterproof sandpaper. This is actually fine sandpaper that you can buy in any hardware store. It works just as well as artist quality pastel papers. It's very durable and virtually indestructible. Now, once I have the sky, I'm going to use a white pencil to draw the shape of these waves, especially the one in the middle, because I'm going to be working around it to draw uh, the rest of the water behind it. So I need to have a rough idea about the overall shape of the wave or the waves. For the surface of the water, I'm going to add a little bit of this darker blue and on this side as well to make that a little bit darker and a bit more bluish but I'm also going to add a touch of green because on the wave I'm going to have some greenish tones the water is mostly going to appear green or bluish green or dull green I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well and once I have that I will just add some tiny details to the surface of the water with a lighter blue pencil just to create some indications of waves and ripples in the distance. I'm also going to add a few touches of this white pencil so that it would look like some of these waves are splashing and, uh, but they're in the distance. Now as for the materials I'm using, I'm going to be using mostly Kohinoor pastels, Kohinoor soft pastels and Kohinoor pastel pencils. I'm also going to sketch out the bottom of this crest of the wave. So the crest of the wave is the top part that's usually white and foamy because that's where the water splashes and crashes. Now I'm going to start experimenting with a few greens. I put down a little bit of the smith tone green, but I'm going to need a bit of this darker green as well. And here and there I'm going to put in a touch of this lighter pale green. And I'm maybe going to try to curve these strokes a little bit to indicate the movement of the water because the waves the, the wave is kind of spilling over and to make it a little bit darker in places the dark green is not going to be enough so I'm going to add a touch of black pastel pencil just a little bit and I'm going to blend that most of the blending will be done with my fingers because fingers are great blending tools, especially when working with pastels. Here on the lower side or the underside of the uh, wave that is spilling over, we're going to have some darker greens, but we're also going to have some lighter greens here near the top, where the wave is kind of thinner and more translucent. So I'm going to blend that in nicely. 
to create a softer transition between that lighter area and the darker area at the bottom. And I'm going to add a few more touches of the light green pastel. This is very close to what I wanted to achieve. So now I'm going to start working on the foamy water, the splashing water on the top of that wave, on the crest of the wave. Water moves all the time, so it's difficult to capture the exact shape of the waves. <clears throat> but there are some general things that you need to pay attention to. So, at the top, we have something that looks like a top of a hill. And then at the bottom, we have something that looks like a, like a valley, I suppose. And at the top, you're usually going to have some splashing water. And sometimes you will see how that crest is curving to one side and curving down, spilling over on the other side. Now, not all of it is going to be completely white. This is very important because some of that splashing foamy water will be almost completely white. But some of it will be a little bit darker. Not quite white, but maybe light grey or light bluish grey. And it's important to capture that, uh, that subtle contrast in value. Because that will make the wave look more three-dimensional. Because waves are 3D objects after all. And each, you need to be able to explain uh, their shape and volume. You need to be able to convey that feeling of volume to the viewer. And you can see that I made one part of that foamy water a little bit darker using a little bit of grayish and bluish values. And on top of that I added more of this plain pure white. That's because some parts of that filmy water at the top are more exposed to the light source, while other parts of it are in the shadow. So just like if we were shading hills or mountains, we need to pay attention to the direction of the light source, where it's coming from, and how the light is interacting with the object that we're drawing. Some parts of it will be lighter because they're more exposed to the light source. Others will be darker because they're facing away from the light source. There will also be shadows and shadow areas and there will be highlights and lighter areas. The same thing goes for things like waves, clouds, anything else you see in landscapes. Here I'm adding some more of that splashing water just by um, dabbing my pencil occasionally, making tiny dots, and sometimes by dragging it, creating uh, an illusion of uh, lots of tiny um, splashing droplets. Here and there you want to draw some of them that are kind of flying away detached from the rest of that foamy crest. Others will be kind of more connected with tiny streams splashing upwards. You want to have some larger droplets or groups of droplets and some smaller ones. So you want some randomness and variation so that that splashing water would look more natural. The videos I post here on YouTube are usually not very short, but not full length either. So if you want to see full length videos, you should head over to my Patreon. Here where the foamy water of that crest of, of the wave is spilling over, it's going to be a little bit darker because it's in the shadow. I used a little bit of grey pastel and a touch of bluish ultramarine pastel pencil. And then on top of that I'm using some more plain white white pencil.
wherever I feel like um, the splashing water needs to be even whiter I just add a little bit more of that white on top the good thing about this surface is that it allows for multiple layers so sometimes when I have a darker layer underneath it's not a problem I can just put in a lighter pencil on top I added a little bit more of that light green and I did a bit of refining with a tortillion. When I have to work in smaller places where it's kind of awkward to work or blend with a finger, uh, you can use a tortillion for some of those smaller details. One other trick that I use with a tortillion is to pick up a little bit of that pastel dust and draw with it. Here at the bottom of that wave we're going to have some darker values. So I added a little bit more dark green at the bottom but I'm back to adding some more splashing water at the top here because I want to maybe modify or refine the shape of the crest of the wave, of the wave a little bit more. So I'm going to keep adding some more splashing water here on the left and uh, once I do at least that part I think both the shape of the wave and the movement of the water within it will be a lot more uh, logical. It will make a, a lot more sense to the viewer because right now I'm not sure if you can tell really what's going on. It looks like a wave a little bit but you can't fully understand what's going on with the water. Because I want the water to be a little bit dark, that splashing white water to be a little bit darker here at the bottom. I did some blending and allowed some of that darker pastel dust to go into that white and I also spread the white pastel a little bit thinner so that I would get those shadow areas and then on top of that I went over them with a white pastel and now you can see that contrast, that fine contrast between the very light grey areas and the completely white areas you need that range of value in order to make the waves look realistic. Finally, when I felt that I couldn't uh, do much more with a pencil, I used a piece of soft uh, white pastel because it'll give me even larger marks and even more opaque, brighter marks. Once I have that in place, I'm going to keep adding more green here at the base of the wave. This is all going to be dark green. So I'm using a dark green pastel pencil. I don't really know what its number or uh, name is in the Kohinoor range. And other people are going to be using different uh, pastels, so it doesn't really matter, I suppose. On top of that, I'm adding a little bit of black pastel pencil. I want this to be a bit darker. I think these two, these two will combine well enough because as you can see I'm getting a very nice looking dark green color just by putting down a bit of black on top of the dark green. Here in this area I'm gonna add a little bit more of, um, of this light pale light green pastel because I want some parts of those waves at the top to be a bit more transparent or translucent like they're letting they're letting a little bit more light through because the water is getting thinner there it's splashing up and it's thicker and deeper at the bottom or the base of the wave near the trough of the wave and I'm making a transition between the lighter and darker area by adding some darker pencils and a touch of grey as well to make it a little bit duller because I don't really want those bright green colors it would look too much like, uh, like grass so it needs to be a little bit duller, a little bit more greyish and uh, a little bit more foamy water here at the top on the right as well. So now I think the whole shape of the wave is starting to make a lot more sense and 
and uh, now you can see the, the way the water is moving and the way that the water is spilling over and you can see the direction of the movement of that water a little bit better and you can also see the shape of that um, wave and the contrast between the lighter parts of the wave where the, where the light is breaking through and the darker parts at the bottom. To further enhance that contrast I'm adding even more black pastel, this time using a soft black pastel and uh, just pushing that in with my finger and that is really increasing the range of value and contrast between the lightest parts of the wave and the darkest parts of the wave. Notice that I'm also trying to imitate that curve, that movement of the water a little bit. And with a white pencil I'm also refining the splashing water a little bit and adding some of these foamy streaks or streams within the wave. Um, once I have that, I'm going to work on the bottom portion of the wave and I'm going to add a touch of blue pastel at the bottom because I want this part to be to have a little bit of bluish color maybe, not just green. At the bottom, I'm going to add first a little bit of green pastel. So the, the wave is spilling over here, we're going to have lots of smaller ripples and waves and some foamy water but the water is kind of calmer and more flat here in this area. I added a little bit of light grey and a little bit of light green and I'm going to blend this and I'm going to throw in a touch of uh, bluish color as well and I'm going to blend this and I'm not going to try to blend it completely thoroughly just like I didn't layer these different colors uh, thoroughly. I want a little bit of randomness and variation as you can see. Uh, lots of these random variations in color that I wouldn't be able to produce if I were just trying to uh, draw every single detail in a de deliberate manner. This is much quicker and it actually looks much better because it's more spontaneous and looks more random and more um, more organic, more natural, realistic looking. Adding a little bit more blue at the bottom but because here the water is no longer that greenish. So this part of the splashing water here um, its edges were a little bit too clean, too smooth when I did the blending so now I'm refining them by adding some more smaller, finer details like splashing water, smaller droplets or groups of droplets. And I'm adding some of these uh, tiny details in the water with a white pencil. Like maybe there are some tiny, tiny bits of splashing water at the base of that wave. I'm going to be adding more and more of that here at the bottom. But this time I'm making longer lines to indicate uh, those uh, waves where the water has already spilled over and it's a little bit calmer and a little bit more horizontal as I already mentioned. The waves are a little bit gentler here but they're still the water is still splashing a little bit and there's still a little bit of that foamy water here and there so I want to have a little bit of that touches of white pencil and some of those uh, white foamy streaks or streams clashing and colliding with one another. I'm going to add a little bit of white pastel as well and then soften that with my finger. Do a little bit of blending to make, them, to make that look a bit more natural, not just like a bunch of lines. I'm not going to soften all of the lines. In some cases I want slightly cleaner marks, I want some cleaner, uh, how should I put it, bits of that uh, splashing foamy water to stand out against that dark greenish 
surface of the water and I can always go back in and add some some more of those cleaner shapes, cleaner marks to refine the appearance of those <coughs> of those waves in the foreground. I also want to make some interrupted shapes and I want to have these waves kind of crashing into one another and overlapping slightly maybe. So I think as you can see now the scene is almost complete. I'm just going to keep adding these tiny white marks until I'm happy with the appearance of the, of the foreground area which needs to be pretty detailed <coughs> because it is the foreground but I think the main part of the drawing is after all the, the wave in the middle. I'm just going to add a few marks in the distance to make some indications of waves in, in the back and finally I'm going to put my signature in the lower left corner and now the drawing is done. Let me know what you think in the comments check out my other videos, give me a like and subscribe if you want to for longer videos, much more content, full length narrated videos real-time footage, you should check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.